The next sentence is very boring, so please bear with me. And that is that West Ham have decided to offer a 30 million rights issue to the current investors in West Ham United. What a boring sentence that is, but the implications of it are far more interesting than that. Why are they doing that? They need to put some money into the club because there's none coming in. So the current investors basically get asked by themselves to put 30 million quid in. What do they get for it? Will they get more shares? Now, clearly, they're already 100% of the shares are already gone. So in essence, what happens is you get invited to buy some more shares. And if you don't, then your shares get watered down. It's better than a loan because obviously the club don't then have to pay interest. But what it does mean, as far as I can see is that I think we are going to all be stuck with each other for a fair while longer. Now, you've seen a lot of companies going into administration and, and folding and that sort of thing. This is not an option for our owners, OK? Uh, Messrs Golden Sullivan have invested so much money, they just can't afford to lose it. It will be like them writing off everything that they've invested. They're not prepared to do that. But the value of a football club is directly linked to the revenue coming in from the TV companies. And at the moment, that is in doubt. That is sketchy. They don't know whether they're going to have to pay some money back. They don't know whether they're going to have to defer it. They don't know whether it carries on to the next season. What I am certain of is that the next TV deal is not going to be as big. How can it be? There's too much uncertainty in the game. Even if we believe that football is going to start to get back on track, I can't believe that it is going to be properly back on track for a good couple of years. The domestic season, as we understand it, they're going to try and get it going with the permission of the government. We're possibly here in June or July. Even if that were to happen, that's a very, very scaled down version of football. That means you and I aren't there. We hopefully watch it on a screen at some point, the players go into isolation, all the stuff that we've discussed before, and it does seem that plans are at an advanced stage for that to happen once once the current epidemic reaches its peak. But just because something's reached its peak doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to finish and, and end there. I think we're a long, long time away from us actually being able to go to games and to mix and mingle in the way that we're used to. I also think it's even longer away that clubs are going to be, going to be getting, putting their players onto aeroplanes and playing European games. And of course, the knock-on effect is the international fixtures. It's hard enough to arrange football within the confines of your own legal system, your own laws. And these are new laws that are getting made up all the time, by the way, without getting people to agree to fly from one country to another. I think we're a long way off that. We're in a lot a lot of noise from UEFA and FIFA at the moment. In many respects, I've they've never been more irrelevant. They really haven't. The domestic game is everything. In fact, this whole situation, I believe, has knocked any idea of a European Super League right on the head. It's, it's actually shown, I think it's shown to us how much domestic football is important. I think it's probably shown the clubs how important fans are at a time when really I do believe that we have been sort of marginalised and, and treated and as the as the pauper, so to speak. Um, and it, it's just made everybody focus on on what's important. But with that, with that restriction of football, it's going to become... Uh, it's going to decrease the value of the clubs. There is no doubt about that. And here's where it gets on to West Ham. Golden Sullivan would have very much thought that they were getting to the point where they only had to pay themselves another £40 million which is what their, their loans are outstanding. And then more or less, they were clear. At that point, they were then clear to, to sell the club as and when they saw fit. Anything above that was a profit. They're clearly not going to be able to take their £40 million pound out now. And what they're going to do is they're probably going to invest another £30 million quid in. Now, let me just tell you the investors of West Ham. Where's my glasses? There it is. OK. David Sullivan, 51%. David Gold, 35%. Trip Smith, 10 And Terry Brown and um, and Karen Brady uh, and the Harris family own the remaining shares. So let me tell you what's going to happen now. 
All the investors get asked, all the shareholders get asked to put in the 30 million. What do you get? You get a few more shares, but you've got them anyway. There's already 100% taken up there. I believe it will just be Golden Sullivan that paid the money in the 30 million. Don't be surprised if it's just Sullivan. Everyone else's stake gets watered down ever so slightly at that point. But my point is that the owners are now not owed 40 million. They're now owed 70 million, which takes us even further away from selling the club. And of course, you've got to remember that they've got a figure in mind. We don't really know what it is. We know Mike Ashley. We know Mike Ashley wants 30, uh, sorry, 300 million for Newcastle. He's been close, but he's not really, well, he's, well, he's been close, but obviously it's not got done. You can see that because he's still in ownership of the club. But he has a valuation for that. After this has ended, or even in a year's time, there's just no way that anybody's paying that sort of money for a, a club like Newcastle United. The other clubs are obviously bigger. Clubs like Chelsea, clubs like Manchester United, they would they would have they would have got more money. Why? Because they're more appealing overseas, and of course, European competition pays them an awful lot of money. But I'm not sure. Do not do not expect that when the football, the Premier League season gets up and running, that European football is going to get up and running, I really don't think it's going to. For the reason, for the logistical reasons I mentioned before, that is going to hugely decrease the value of all those clubs that expect and rely on European football. Tottenham are, in, are going to be in a right old mess, quite frankly, because a lot of their budgeting, a lot of their planning would have been based on them qualifying for European football. The stadium, it cost a billion quid, apparently. Two things that that were part of that. Number one was the European football, as I mentioned. Number two was the NFL coming over here. I think possibly the Jacksonville Jaguars, but you'll excuse me if my gridiron is not up to scratch. Them not coming over, well, they're just not. Let's be fair, NFL teams are not coming over to England to play, to play American football anytime soon. Not in the next few months. And I tell you what, not probably not next year either. That was a big income stream. They were relying on that. I think Champions League is gone. I think Europa Cup is gone. And they're going to have to... They're going to have to soak that up. And I think a lot of clubs are going to have to do a similar thing. But my point is the valuation of a club goes down massively. And our club? Well, nobody is going to be coming in to buy that club anytime soon. Certainly not at the money that Golden Sullivan would have wanted initially. Are we going to be in a situation where they think, actually, we don't want 500 million? Do you know what? We'll just take 200 million. I'm not so sure. I don't think it will happen. I think they're better off, probably, as they're concerned, hanging on to it. You've also got the situation with the stadium. Now, this is really interesting as far as I'm concerned. There were certain, what should we call them, flagship events that made the stadium not look like a white elephant. Now, realistically... West Ham's the only show in town for that stadium at the moment because nothing else is bringing in money. I believe the baseball brought in a little bit of money. The concerts, a little bit. I believe athletics was operating at a little bit of a loss. There's not the money there to convert it from football mode, which is what it's in at the moment, back to athletics mode. It costs, I do believe, £11 million to convert it into athletics mode and then back again. Now, it had been put out to tender at the time to see if anybody could do it more cheaply, but clearly they won't have got any further within those negotiations at the moment. At the moment, they cannot afford to change it. You look at London, you look at, look at the transport infrastructure, look at the hospitals, there is no way that that stadium can go cap in hand to the mayor's office and say, excuse me, can you give us our base? We've lost 20 million again this year, which is what it does. Can you give us the money? No way. No way can they do that in the current climate. And realistically, nor should they. Not when over the water, over the river, any the Excel centre, they're trying to put in respirators, ventilators, hospital beds and everything else. That's where the money should go. And rightly so. So bearing in mind, there's going to be an uncertainty around the stadium as well. I cannot see any time soon anybody coming in with an offer that our owners will find acceptable. And just at the point where they were probably looking at their watches, thinking, take the £40 million, we'll be out of here soon. Somebody with a lot of old money will come in and buy the club. 
we found the globe has shrunk significantly in terms of international deals, uh, particularly with a sporting franchise, which is exactly what West Ham London was all about. So, they're going to put the money in. Quite frankly, we probably need it. We probably need the investment. The fact it's not a loan is what, they, is what they're going to have to do because there's not really the money to pay the interest back either. But what I do know, unless something absolutely miraculous happens, is that we're all stuck with each other for a very, very long time. <laughs>